Hey guys, it's Margot at Lanterna here. Today I'm bringing you our second online maths video for analysis and approaches and we're going to be looking at vectors. Now we're going to be splitting the vectors into two parts, part one and a part two, and in this first part we're going to be having a look at the following. Vector representation, vector operations, the scalar or dot product, and finally the equation of a line. So these four points are part of the um, topics 3.12 to 3.14 for higher level. I hope you find this useful. First of all then, vector representation. We're going to have a look at the key ways in which we denote a vector in two dimensions. So the first way to do this is using our matrix representation, where the top component of our matrix here denotes our x component or our horizontal component of our vector, and this bottom component here relates to our vertical component or the y component of our vector. So if we look at the vector u, which I've drawn in this diagram here, we can split it up into its horizontal component, which has a magnitude of u1, and its vertical component, which has a magnitude of u2. Now, another way to represent this is using our unit vector representation. What are the unit vectors? Well, the unit vectors are vectors of magnitude of 1, and i hat is our unit vector in the positive x direction, and j hat is our unit vector in the positive y direction. So, to use that in our representation, what we're saying is that our vector u is equal to the magnitude of the horizontal component times this vector i, which has a magnitude of 1, so it's not going to change the magnitude of that horizontal component, but it's informing us that it's in the x direction. And to that, we're adding our horizontal component magnitude u2 times our unit vector j hat, which again has a magnitude of 1 in the y direction. So we can extend this very simply into three dimensions as well by simply adding a component in our z direction and introducing also a new unit vector k hat which is our um, unit vector with a magnitude of one in the positive z direction. So Vector operations then. First of all, I want to have a look at negating a vector. So what do I mean by negating a vector? Well, if we have a vector u, we're asking what does the vector negative u look like? Well, negative u, the magnitude stays the same, but the negative sign informs us that our new vector is now in the opposite direction, which means our negative u looks like this. Second of all then, addition and subtraction of two vectors. If we have a vector a and another vector b, what will our vector a plus b look like? What we need to do is align the head of one arrow to the tail of our second arrow. So it's going to look something like this if we're adding a and b. A, we want to align the head of that arrow to the tail of our b vector. So then overall, what we're doing is we're moving from the start of vector a to the end of vector b. So our vector a plus b is going to look like this. Third of all, then multiplication by a scalar. If we have a vector u right here, what if we want to multiply that by a scalar such as 3? We want 3u. Well, remember a vector is a quantity with a magnitude and a direction. And if we multiply that by a scalar, which has only a magnitude, you can imagine that only the magnitude of the vector will change and that its direction will remain unchanged. So if we have 3u, for example, then that is going to just be in the same direction of u, but have a length which is 3 times as long. So overall 3u will look something like this. Finding the magnitude of a vector then. Well, the magnitude of a vector essentially translates to the length of that vector or the length of that line we've just drawn in space. This is easiest to look at considering our triangle trigonometry that we know. So we're trying to find the length of this vector. Now, if you remember looking at how we represent this vector, we said usually we know 
it's horizontal and it's vertical component. Well, in that case, recognizing that this is a right angle triangle, we can see that the magnitude of our vector, which we denote by putting it in um, straight brackets, we can find just by using Pythagoras' theorem. So if this is our U1, our horizontal component, and our U2, our vertical component, our magnitude is the square root of U1 squared plus the square root, uh, plus U2 squared. Finally then, a unit vector. So as we saw in the last couple of slides, a unit vector is a vector in um, a given direction, but with a magnitude of one. So for example, say we had, again, a vector u. What if we wanted to find the unit vector of u? Well, what we'd be looking for then is a vector in the same direction as u, but with a magnitude of one. So say this vector u here had a magnitude of three, for example, a unit vector would then look something like this, right? Same direction, but magnitude of one. How do we obtain the unit vector then? So we want to keep the direction, but we want to reduce or increase its magnitude to one. What we do in that case is we have to divide our vector by its magnitude. When we divide a vector by a scalar, remember its direction doesn't change. So we're maintaining the direction and by dividing by its magnitude, we obtain the unit vector in the same direction with a magnitude of one. So the scalar or dot product, there's a number of ways in which we can multiply two vectors together, unlike multiplying scalars. So for example, three times two is always gonna give us six, right? There's no arguing with that. But when we've got two vectors, multiplication isn't as simple as that. We need to consider what type of multiplication we're using. Well, one of these types of multiplication is the dot product, or it's also called the scalar product. And the reason it's called that is because what it does is it takes two vectors, say a and b, and it multiplies them together such that our product is actually a scalar quantity. So that's why it's also called um, the scalar product. Now there's two ways in which we can compute the scalar or dot product, and I've shown those in the two red formulas here. So first of all, what we can do is we multiply, or we use a dot product of a dotted with b, and it's equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b, both scalars, times cos of theta, also a scalar, where theta, as I've indicated in this diagram right here, is the angle between our two vectors. Now, another way to compute the dot product, I've shown here a dot b, what we do is we multiply the corresponding x components of our two vectors, and we sum it with the multiplication of our two y components and our z components. So here we have the x component of a times the x component of b plus the y component of a times the y component of b plus the z component, there should be a three, of a times the z component of b. There's a couple of really important results that follow from this. The first of those we obtain by looking at this first formula. A dot B is equal to the magnitude of A times magnitude of B cos theta. And that tells us that when theta is 90 degrees, i.e. when A and B are perpendicular, the dot product is zero. Now that's a really, really important result. Um, that you should remember. The next result is that we have two parallel vectors when the angle between them is zero, the dot product is equal to the product of the magnitudes of the two vectors. Now another useful thing that comes from this first formula is that if we rearrange it we can actually find the angle between two vectors. So if we rearrange this formula to make cos of theta the subject, we see that we have a relatively simple formula to find the angle between our two vectors. So next we're going to have a look at the vector equation of a line. What I'm really going to draw attention to is how can we visualize this. And to, in order to visualize vectors, we need to have a really good understanding of what different vectors represent and have a good understanding of those vector operations that we talked about earlier in this video. So the vector equation of a line, is given right here, where our vector is 
is a vector which takes us from the origin to any point on the line that we're trying to describe. So our vector is a vector which takes us from the origin to any point on the line. Now, what is R equal to? This line that we're trying to describe, it's a series of points in space. A is the position vector from the origin to a point on the line. So say we knew the coordinates of this vector, uh, of this um, point A, which lies on the line. Well, then A is the position vector which takes us from the origin to that point on this diagram right here. So to A, we add B, where B is the direction vector. And the direction vector is a vector that our line is parallel to. So, for example, we can draw this B in space right here, and we see that our line, which is the black line, what we're trying to describe, is parallel to that vector B. So B is our direction that our line is parallel to. We multiply B by lambda, and what lambda does, it parameterizes the length of the line. Now, what does that mean, parameterizing? Well, basically what it does is it tells us how far along and in which direction along the line we want to go. So let me just demonstrate that. Well, imagine that our lambda is equal to one. Then the point on the line we're trying to describe would be A plus one times B. So if we look on our line, what does that look like? Well, first of all, we're traveling along A, which, as we said, was the, direct, uh, the position vector from the origin to point A. And to that, we're adding B. And B is our vector here, so it has this length and this direction. So we're adding B, joining the tail of B, to the head of A. So that's going to take us to a point on the line about here, so that R overall is our vector going from the origin to that point. So it's a point on a line. Say, for example, that lambda was equal to 2. In that case, our r vector would be equal to a plus 2b. So overall would be so overall would be adding 2b. Now 2b will have twice the magnitude. So therefore, overall will be going from our origin O to this final point right here. So what we've just demonstrated is lambda's role in this formula. It tells us how far along the line we want to go. And by varying the value of lambda, we can get to any point on our line. So this vector r takes us from the origin to any point on our line um, by varying that value of the parameter lambda. So let's have a look at a typical past exam paper then. This exam question is taken from a paper one, which means there is no calculator. And it reads, a line L1 has equation R, and point P lies on L1 and has coordinates 15, 9, C. Find C. So let's just recall what we said about the vector equation of a line on the previous slide. We said that R vector, which represents the vector equation of a line, takes us from the origin to any point on the line. And we get to the different points on the line by varying the value of the parameter, which in this case is s. So what we're looking to do here is we're trying to find the value of s such that we get to this point p, which has this coordinate. Now, to find the value of s that we're looking for, we know that our x coordinate that takes us to point P has to be equal to 15, right? The x coordinate of P is 15, and we know that the x coordinate um, of any point on the line is described by minus 3 plus 6s, just taking that top component of the vector equation of the line. So from this, we should see that 6s is equal to 18 
and S therefore must be equal to three. So if our parameter is equal to three, this should take us to point P on our line, which means that if we substitute this value of S into our vector equation, we can find the Z coordinate of this point P. So 10 plus two times S is our Z coordinate is C. And we know that S is three, we've just worked that out. So therefore 10 plus two times three is 10 plus six is equal to C. And therefore C is equal to 16. So our Z coordinate is equal to 16. Okay, part B then, given a second line L2 passes through the coordinates one, two, three, and is parallel to L1, write down a vector equation for L2. Okay, well, we already have an example of a vector equation in this question, right? We're told here a vector equation, and let's just remind ourselves of the different components which make up a vector equation of a line. So this first one here, we said A is the position vector which takes us from the origin to a point on the line. To that, we add our direction vector uh, B, which is a vector that our line is parallel to, and we have to multiply that by some arbitrary parameter, which essentially, if we fill in a certain value for it, tells us how far along the line we go. So L2 then will be described by the vector equation of a line. And first of all, we need to find a point that our line L2 passes through. And we're told in the question that it passes through the coordinates one, two, three. Therefore, the position vector which takes us from the origin to a point on the line, or to our point one, two, three, will simply be this um, vector right here. To that, we add our parameter multiplied by our direction vector. We're told that our line L2 is parallel to L1, therefore must be in the same direction as L1 and therefore have the same direction vector, six, zero, two. So there we have it. So that was it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back with more, but in the meantime, check out our website or our YouTube channel to find videos and lots of other subjects such as ESS, um, chemistry, geography, economics, um, with even more to come. I hope to see you next time, but most of all, I hope you found this video useful.